tragedy of resources is a phenomenon, that rich countries and resources become poor. In the last video, we looked at the case of Indonesia. Now, let's turn our attention to another continent, Africa. Today, I'm going to focus on the case of Ethiopia, by comparing it with South Korea, because this is clear case that shows contrapositive proposition. It's some countries can develop rapidly, despite their very limited resources. Let's start with Ethiopia's GDP. Nowadays, Ethiopia has become synonymous with poverty. In the 1950s, Ethiopia's GDP per capita was around $200, while South Korea was around $30 at same time. But their GDP per capita still remained $204 in 1981. Time goes by, Korea hosts the World Cup with Japan in 2002. Ethiopia's GDP per capita was swapping. It was $110. I'm not misspelling $1,100. It's $110 clearly. Ethiopia's clearly per capita was cut in half, while South Korea's grew 1,000 times. Even, that's without adjusting for inflation. What if we take inflation into account? $110 is the price taken to eat food a day in the U.S. Country with the highest GDP per capita is Luxembourg, which about $1.04 million in 2024. They earn 13,000 times more than Ethiopia. In other words, if people of Luxembourg take a nap, they can earn the yearly income of an Ethiopian. So how did Ethiopia get so messed up in the first place? Well, ancient Ethiopia was the center of the Ankhmin civilization and one of the most powerful countries in the world. In the 13th century, the Mongol Empire dominated the world. As you may know, the Mongols built the largest empire in history. They were ruthless and terrifying, so Europeans trembled with fear. There was one country who defeated this overwhelming power. It was Ethiopia. In the late 19th century, Europe was expanding its colonies, Ethiopia was also invaded. The Italians set out to colonize Ethiopia. However, at the Battle of Adwa in 896, the Ethiopian army defeated the Italians. This makes Ethiopia the only country who defend against European colonization in Africa. Ethiopia has become an extremely poor country since the 20th century. Until the 19th century, it was possible to achieve a certain level of national power, simply by securing and protecting resources. Indeed, prior to the advent of the postmodern era, resources constituted a pivotal factor in the capacity of a state to exert power. This phenomenon was not exclusive to Africa, but was observed across the globe. At the time, the most effective method for a country to achieve hegemony was the action of invasion and conquest of other territories. The expansion of territory led to an increase in agricultural production. It is important to note that technology also played a role in this process. However, at that time, most technologies were concentrated in the military field. Consequently, further territorial expansion was of paramount importance. The newly acquired territory possessed valuable resources including gold and silver, which could be utilized as currency, and iron which could be employed to manufacture superior weapons. This law became a virtuous cycle. To understand fully, you need to know the Malthusian trap, which we will cover soon. But since the beginning of the postmodern era, situation have changed. Advanced technology overwhelms the resource. So now let's take a look at the industrial structure of Ethiopia. What's grace industry, as you might have guessed from the previous video, it's agriculture. In 2015, agriculture accounted for 40.5 of GDP, 81 of exports, and 85 of the labor force. Ethiopia depends almost every economic activities on agriculture, especially coffee. As an aside, the origins of coffee can be found in Ethiopia. Coffee was first cultivated in African countries, mainly in Ethiopia and Kenya, and it was brought to Europe via Italy and the Arabs. This is why Italians are so proud of their coffee, and it's reason why the coffee bean is named Arabica. Another 19 of the total GDP comes from livestock. Primary industry accounts for about 60 of total industrial production. And almost all exports. How about Ethiopia's manufacturing industry? Workers in Ethiopian garment factories for global brands like Hay and Mim and Calvin Klein. Very low wages have led to low productivity, frequent strikes, and high turnover. It's a sad reality that some companies are exploiting their workers. While it's easy to point the finger, it's important to remember that purpose of firm is to maximize profit. In economics, with certain constraint, maximization of profit and minimization of cost the same. Let's imagine that these companies sourced workers from the United States. In that case, they would have to pay 100 times as much in wages. Who can blame them for trying to make a profit? This is why major tech companies have built factories in China. China was able to create Toyomi, 
because it attracted Apple and Samsung factories. Reengineering is a very good strategy for Chaser. However, Ethiopia is different from China. China is a country that has educated engineers. They easily imitate technology. Ethiopia can't even copy whatever technology comes in. The level of education is too low. How could they care education? When your neighbor's baby doesn't live just months and dies, could education is first priority? However, without education, there is no bright future. In fact, Ethiopia started manufacturing in 90s. It's too late, and they don't have the power to catch up. It's a vicious cycle that keeps accelerating. It's time for the government to make the right policies. In short again, dependence on resources can be the way to make a rich a poor. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart.